If you're new to Moho, you're probably feeling overwhelmed by the many ways you can attach artwork to bones. Or maybe just whelmed? Is that a word? If it isn't, it should be. Hey, welcome back to Little Green Dog's animation tutorial series. In this episode, we'll learn about the five bone binding methods and how to use them. One, two, three, four. The version of Moho we'll be using is 14.3. So, what the heck is bone binding? Simply put, it's a way to attach artwork to bones, so it can be posed and animated like a puppet. There are basically five bone binding methods in Moho, and these are flexi bind, link bones, smooth joint, bind layer, and bind points. Moho has another feature for bending artwork called Curver, which uses drawn curves instead of bones. Because Curver works very differently from Bones, we'll talk about it in a separate tutorial. For this tutorial, we'll stay focused on the binding methods for Bones. If you'd like to follow along in your copy of Moho, you can download the content for this tutorial from the link in the description. The content includes several activities in a single Moho project file. During the tutorial, you'll be instructed to hide a group layer for one activity and show a group layer for another. Okay, let's get started. The first method is FlexiBind, which is Moho's default binding method. When we create artwork in Moho or import artwork from another program, Moho automatically applies FlexiBind to the artwork. This means every bone in the artwork's bone layer will have some effect on the artwork. How much effect? That depends on each bone's bone strength which is set by choosing the Bone Strength tool, selecting a bone with it, and dragging the tool sideways. When I drag it to the right, the bone's capsule size increases, and the bigger the capsule, the stronger the bone strength. Dragging it to the left decreases the strength. When more than one bone is selected, the Bone Strength tool can adjust all of the bones in the selection at once. Note that the visual size of the capsule has nothing to do with the range of the bone's influence. The capsule size is for comparing a bone's strength relative to other bones in the same bone layer. The bone strength can also be set numerically by typing or scrubbing in the bone strength box in the tool options bar. When the bone strength is dialed down to zero, then the bone has no effect on the artwork. So if one of your bones stops working, this is the first thing to check. In the early days of Moho, we used the Offset Bone tool to limit bones to specific artwork by moving them away from other bones. But there's a better way now, and that's called Link Bones. The second binding method is Link Bones. Link Bones is actually the same as FlexiBind except we have the option to specify which bones in the rig will affect the selected artwork. For example, when I'm using only FlexiBind without the use of offset bones, the bones in the arms of this rig affect the torso and other parts of the body. Ooh, that's not what I want. But when I apply link bones to each part of the body, the parts are affected only by the bones that have been assigned to them. In other words, the artwork using link bones ignores all the other bones in the rig. To use link bones, we select the artwork layers, the bones we want to link, and then we click the link bones button. So in this example, select the layer for the torso the bones of the spine, and click the Link Bones button. You'll notice the spine bones look slightly heavier now. This shows they're linked to the selected layer. Let's try moving the arms. See how they no longer affect the torso? However, when I rotate the spine, 
notice how the spine still affects the arms. This is because the arms are still using the default flexibind method. To prevent this, I need to use link bones to bind the arm layers to the bones for each arm. So let's do that. Now, each body part layer is affected only by their linked bones. Here's a before and after comparison. So, if you plan to use link bones as your main binding method, it's a good idea to apply it throughout the entire rig. If the wrong bones were linked, the error can be fixed by selecting the correct bones and clicking Link Bones again. When your artwork is split into multiple layers, as in this example, and each of the layers will be linked to the same bones, you can speed things up by selecting all of the layers and linking them with one click. To unlink bones, deselect all bones, and then click Link Bones. You'll know the bones are unlinked because they're no longer highlighted. Smooth joint is a binding method that creates a circular region between two bones and bends the artwork inside that circle. I'll demonstrate how to use smooth joint using this cat arm I painted in a paint program. At the moment, the arm is using the default flexibind method for the elbow. To apply smooth joint, first select the artwork, in this case the arm layer, then choose the select bone tool and select the two bones that will bend the artwork and then choose Bones, Create Smooth Joint for Bone Pair. And now I have a nice bend at the elbow joint. I'll play the animation. Smooth Joint can be a quick and easy way to rig a character, but it does have one big limitation. So, what is this limitation? For a selected artwork layer, smooth joint only works between two bones. So this means when smooth joint is used for the elbow in this drawing, it cannot be used for the wrist. Or in another example, when smooth joint is used for a character's knee, it can't also be used for the ankle. You're probably wondering, but DR, I can see the wrist bending. What's going on there? Well, hold your horses, buckaroo because there are at least two ways to work around the limitation. The first is to split the character's hand or foot into a separate layer, and then use a different binding method for that layer. That's what I did for this kitty arm. The paw portion of the arm was cut out into its own layer, and then bind layer was used to attach it to the paw bone. What's bind layer? We'll learn about that in just a minute. Another workaround is to duplicate the arm drawing Use the cropping tool to hide half the limb. And apply a different smooth joint to each half. In this case, one for the elbow and one for the wrist. That's an advanced technique, and we'll talk more about this and other techniques in a tutorial on rigging arms and legs. Smooth joint is specialized, so I don't get to use it very much. But one reason I like Smooth Joint is that it lets me spin a character's arm like this without twisting the artwork. If you watch the Puss in Boots rigging and animation demo on my personal channel, you can see this method in action using textured artwork. I'll provide a link in the description below.
bind layer is the simplest binding method. It's used to bind a single layer to a single bone. Unlike the first three binding methods, bind layer is applied using a tool instead of a menu command. To use bind layer, select a layer or group to bind, then select the bind layer tool, and click on the bone we wish to bind the layer to. Done. We use the bind layer method when we want a layer or group to follow only one bone's movement, and we don't want that layer to be affected by other bones in the rig. It works with any type of layer, not just vector and bitmap. When bind layer is used for a group layer, however, be aware that everything inside the group will ignore all other bones in the bone layer. This is normal behavior for this binding method. Bind points is for binding selected points to a single bone. It's a simple method with many practical uses. Like bind layer, this method is applied using a tool instead of a menu command. In this example, I have a happy face drawing, and I want to bind the parts of the face to the individual face bones. Here's what the rig looks like with only the default flexi bind applied. Not so good. Let's fix it using bind points. To apply bind points, first make sure we're on frame zero. Frame zero is known as the setup frame, and many rigging tools, like bind points, are available only when we're on the setup frame. Next, select the head layer, which contains the points we will be binding. Over in the Tools window, choose the Bind Points tool. Press and hold the Alt key to select the bone, and then select the points to bind. To bind the points, click the Bind Points button. The selected points are now highlighted in red, which means these points are now bound to this red bone. Let's scrub the timeline. See how the eye now follows the bone? When you use the bind points tool, the selected points are bound to a single bone. However, any point in the layer can be bound to a different bone. I'm going to repeat these steps for the other eye. Remember to go to the setup frame. First, I'll press and hold Alt and select the bone. But before I select the points, notice how the previously selected points were dropped when I clicked on the bone. It's important to select the bone first, and then the points. If we select the points first, the tool will drop the points when we select the bone, and we'll have to select the points again. Now I'll select the eye points, and click Bind Points. If I make a mistake, there's an Unbind Points button over here. Now let's bind the mouth points. I'll click on the mouth bone, select the mouth points, and click Bind Points. Here's the test animation with bind points applied. Let's reset the rig and do this one more time. To reset the rig, first make sure we're on the setup frame. Select the head layer, then choose Bone Reset All Bone Rigging. This removes the binding from the selected artwork layer and resets it to the default FlexiBind binding. Now let's bind the face. Select the bone, select the points, and press Enter. Select the bone, select the points, press Enter. Select the bone, select the points, press Enter. And we're done. And yes, pressing the Enter key is the same as clicking the Bind Points button. Here's a comparison of our rig, before and after binding points. Looking good. All right, let's move on to our final example. Oh, this is taking too long. Let's not do the card this time. Just do this. Close the bones happy layer and hide it. Then show and select the bones torso with arms layer and open it. What do you think? Was that easier? Let me know in the comments. Anywho, in this example, we have a torso with arms rig that has link bones applied to the arms and torso. 
When we play the test animation, the bones for the arms and torso are respecting each other's layers. However, something funny is going on with the elbows. Well, guess what? We can fix this using bind points. First, make sure we're on frame zero. Now select the arm L layer. Then choose the bind points tool. Using alt click, I'm selecting the upper arm bone. And then I'm selecting the points above the elbow. Press enter to bind points. The upper arm points are bound to the upper arm bone. Select the lower arm bone, then the points between the elbow and wrist, and press enter. Select the hand bone, the hand points below the wrist, and press enter. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, that's much better. The points using bind points are now rigidly bound to their bones, but the points using flexi-bind in the elbow and wrist remain flexible. Let's do the other arm. Now let's check the animation. That looks pretty good. When I'm choosing a binding method, I'll carefully consider the character design and how I intend to animate it. When I'm not sure about my approach, I'll test it on a bare bones rig, like the ones we used earlier. I find it easier to test a method with a rig that does only the one thing I'm testing. If the method works in my test, I'll apply what I learned to my fully rigged character. Here are some tips for figuring out which method to use. When I need a squishy, organic look to my character, I'll start with FlexiBind. When I need to limit the influence of FlexiBind to specific layers, I'll use Link Bones. Smooth Join is great when I need a tight but smooth bend between two bones. I use Bind Layer when I need to attach an item to one bone. And finally, I'll use bind points when I need to lock individual points in a vector drawing to different bones. What's nice is that Moho lets you combine any of these methods in the same rig. For example, I can use FlexiBind for parts that are soft and fleshy, and bind points where it's more bony and rigid. If a layer's binding somehow gets broken, it can be time consuming to figure out how to fix it. So what I do instead is I forget about fixing it and just reset it. To reset a broken layer's binding, select the layer and go to Bones, Reset All Bone Rigging. This command may sound scary, but it's safe to use when you understand what it does and how it works. When you run Reset All Bone Rigging, Moho resets the binding method of the selected layers to the default FlexiBind method. The other layers in your rig will keep their current binding methods and won't be affected by the reset. Be careful though, because when no layers are selected, Moho will assume we want to reset all of the layers. If you're not sure about using this command, be sure to save a copy of your project before running it, just to be safe. That's all for now. If you found this tutorial helpful, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Your support is what keeps the team going to bring you more cartoons and tutorials. Oh, and it helps Mama-chan pay their doctor's bill too. I'm okay.